What's going on, arcade nerds? Uh, I've been sick for about a month and a half. Uh, me and my wife, my kids, we had a flu, and uh, I was pretty damn sick. And for that month and a half, I had this terrible ringing in my ears, and I couldn't concentrate or start or finish any project. And because of that, I haven't put out any videos for a while, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to try to get back in the game. Um, I'm going to, and to be honest, I haven't done a video for so long that I kind of um, don't know what kind of video to do. So I'm going to do a, a long requested video that was, that was requested a long time ago. And I was originally intending to um, uh, wait for a better camera because it involves me recording vector screens. And I have had a lot of complaints from you guys about... You know, my, my, my camera has autofocus. I, I do not have a fixed focus for my camera, so the camera kind of wanders to focus and doesn't really work right. And, you know, it, it's a shame because I had uh, four uh, known, in, known uh, engineers in the arcade hobby that came over my house while I was sick and would have made four really great videos. Um, but, you know, anyways, I need your help. Uh, help me get started again. Give me some ideas on some videos we're going to do. But for now, we're going to do my top 10, my favorite, my top 10 uh, favorite vector arcade machines. So, let's check it out. Okay, this one is kind of a cheat. Because uh, this really isn't an arcade machine. Uh, well, it is and it isn't. Um, but um, my, as of right now, my absolute favorite vector machine is my homemade color Vectrex arcade machine. Um... Yeah, um, <clears throat> so it's, it was never a really a released arcade machine, but um, this is still definitely my favorite as of right now. And one of the, one of the reasons that it's my favorite is, uh, first off, it's in color, which is awesome, uh, and, and the Vic Fever alone. Now, if you haven't heard of these things, these are these are absolutely amazing. You can put like 300 Vectrex games, mostly homebrew, obviously, on one Vectrex and play it. But to be honest, one of my favorites is Mindstorm. So I'm going to show you a little bit of Mindstorm, and then we'll move on to a real. So I guess we're I guess we can kind of technically call this top nine because this isn't a real. What this is my favorite here at the house, at least. Yeah, just recently this uh, this broke down, and uh, I knew what chip it was, and uh, a buddy of mine, Fred Konoponska, he was he was coming over my house, and he brought over a different chip. It was it's the same chip, just a different, slightly different variant and model number, and it changed all the colors around. So now all the colors are completely different, which is kind of interesting. Um, ah. By the way, if you want to do a color mod to your Vectrex, uh, contact me. Uh, my email is copjason83 at yahoo.com. I'll tell you exactly how I did it. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know. Oh, also, uh, someday in the future, um, through Paradise Arcade Shop, I will be making a, uh, a board that you can convert your standard Vectrex to, you know, display color. Obviously, you need a color vector monitor, of course, too, but... But you guys have seen Mindstorm before. Boy, is that... Damn, is that fuzzy. I'm looking at the camera right now. It's so damn fuzzy. Oh, that pisses me off. It's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's let hopefully the next uh, the next uh, game will come out a little better. Well, we can't forget about <clears throat> asteroids. So I would say, as of now, I mean, my list kind of changes as time goes by. But man, asteroids is like it's always been up there. It always has. Um, you can see my screen's a little squeezed because I ended up giving my board to someone else and then fixing a different board to put back in my machine so and I never actually readjusted the pots on the board properly yet but uh, let's do let's do a, a minute or so of uh, asteroids now if, if you haven't watched my channel 
Uh, I did another video where I did a color asteroids hack. Now, someone in the past did a color asteroids hack, but they did not um, observe or, or bother to use the blanking circuit. And so I, did, I actually messed with the blanking circuit so it actually worked right. On the other guy's hack, there was tails be behind all the vectors and whatever. But, uh, <coughs> you've seen asteroids, right? But, uh, yeah, so, and on the color asteroids hack I did, I changed all the graphics around, so it was kind of cool. But, yeah, uh, asteroids is one of those ones that, you know, I, lo I love me my asteroids. <laughs> I have to say, next in line would definitely, definitely be Major Havoc. So let me try to set up this tripod and try to play a game without dry humping the camera stand too much here. Absolutely, absolutely one of my favorites here. Uh, okay. Oh man, I can't keep, no, I can reach the controls. All right, I'll do it this way. hands are stretched. We're gonna do it though. I really wish, this is almost like an adventure game, right? I mean, I really wish um, Vector, Vector Arcade Machines would have been around uh, a few years longer because, uh, man, imagine if they would have made like a Vector Mario at some point. Wouldn't that have been awesome? Oh jeez. And this is wow. Hold on. I'm moving the camera. That's just terrible. Okay, let's do this. Now I can get in front. Oh man, all the reflections and stuff. Here, that's a little better. <clears throat> At least now I can get there, but of course you guys probably can't see. I think it was cool how some of the later vectors drew so much on the screen. And to be honest, it was, they were capable of drawing way more, but they just never did it yet. You know what I mean? I like the little mini breakout there, too. Also on that screen, it tells you little messages like trash ejected into space and nonsense things that really don't mean anything, but they're pretty cool if you're a kid. Like imagining stuff, you know what I mean? It does play better with the roller controller too. So you guys with the uh, conversions. Okay, Tax Scan. This is one of those games that I could just play forever. Um, the, and the interesting thing is, I think it was they made it this game a little too easy, uh, because I mean, I'm not I'm not that good at these games. I'm really not. But I could play this game for a half an hour on one quarter. Um, so if for, for a crappy player like me, that's saying something. But I really enjoy this game, man. I love that. Maybe because it's so easy. I don't know. Um, but let me start this sucker up. Okay, with Tax Scan, um, you have the option. There's two buttons on the bottom. There's Fire and there's Add a Ship. I can add a ship and you can earn ships and so on. And to fill in these locations. And while the game plays, you can actually see uh, where, where the ships are and where they could have been. So you can add them. And your formations change and so on. You'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. But okay, let's start one player game. Now, I'm 
controlling these ships with a spinner. Once again, I'm dry humping this stupid camera stand. And I'm playing terrible because of it. right there. This is one of those games that you can't get the sound effects to work right in MAME. You haven't heard this unless you've played on a real machine. idea here is to stay inside the green green lines and don't crash into the walls. By the way, I think this is, by the way, this is the only uh, released um, vector uh, machine made by Bally Midway. Uh, but this is one of the prettiest cabinets ever, man. Uh, uh, one of these days, I was debating on putting uh, color-changing uh, LEDs behind the artwork of the marquee and so on to kind of bring out some of the colors as they change and so on. But uh, this is a wonderful game. Unfortunately, there's so many of them out there that are dead because the bat there's a battery <clears throat> on these boards and when they when it, when it leaked the the battery well I keep calling it acid but the alkaline from the battery would damage the boards and so many Omega races uh, nowadays are actually uh, out for the count uh, but l luckily I, I got into a mega race phase for a while and I fixed so I have this board and another working board so when this breaks down I'll have 
a buffer between fixing them and so on. But uh, this is an awesome game. If you haven't played it, here it is. It's an awesome, awesome game. I'm going to try to do the... Actually, this one isn't so bad. I'm not humping the camera stand so much right now. This isn't so bad. I can do this. This game runs off a Z80 processor. This is another project that I was debating on doing. If I come across another Omega Race cabinet, easy, you know, or cheap, I might consider making a color mod for a Mega Race. Oh, jeez. Let me try to zoom in. Will that help you guys out? Maybe. Move the camera down. Oh. So, killing myself. Well, that's, that's what we get. Yeah, this just has a thrust button and a fire button. What you really want to do is you want to trail behind and get all the all these guys. unreleased prototype for a mega race called Earth Friend. If anyone knows anything about a Valley Midway game called Earth Friend, please let me know. Please let the community know. Uh, because I I believe it ran on Omega Race hardware. It was an unreleased vector made by Valley Midway and uh, it would just be amazing if someone could could come up with one with one of those. But uh, yeah so that is Omega Race. Let's let's play the next game. You know, I bet you guys assumed I was going to go for all the rarities. But honestly, a lot of the staples in here are my favorite games. You know what I mean? Um, and, and I know we already went over Asteroids, but Asteroids Deluxe, they did something all totally different. Uh, first off, they added, they added the extra hardware to rotate the vectors, which that's not a big deal. But the, the cool thing about this is they had like a mothership that you would shoot they would break up and became become several little ships, and you had to shoot all those ships because they're going after you, and so on. So, uh, let me coin this sucker up. Oh, that's right, I have to leave the coin door open on this one. Because the interlock... Okay, so let me coin this sucker up. such a bright monitor. This uh, tube came out of the Space Invaders that looked it had zero burn. And I figured this ought to be a good tube. I ended up being lucky. Okay, here's that ship I was talking about. You shoot it, and they all come out. I got a sticky button. Come on, sticky button, I'm pressing right, right now. You bastard. Looks like I'm gonna need to clean the buttons. Damn it! There we go, something came back for a second. Aw, oh, it's not going. Now it's going. I need to clean my contacts. Common thing with these older games that have leaf switches for buttons. You know, they get dirty just like an old EM pinball machine. You gotta kinda clean the contacts every now and then. Oh, I can't turn right. I'll just keep on going left and see how that happens. Left only. Go right! Oh. Well, I'm gonna have to clean that button. But yeah, Asteroids Deluxe. Space Duel is definitely one of my favorites right here. Um, this was, I believe, my second... I don't know about this specific one, but Space Duel was my second vector arcade machine I ever had. 
and uh, uh, boy, I fell in love with this game. I would stay up all night, all night, and play this stupid game. And I had the volume cranked up, and Kelly's complaining. She wants to go to sleep, and I'm, she's hearing all these explosions and stuff. Um, yeah, definitely, it's a huge one on my list. Um, I always play with connected. I like them connected. There's different options when the game starts out. But uh, believe it or not, years ago, I used to work for a TV repair shop. And I used to fix TVs, and the guy, you know, I, I, was, get, I was getting into arcade machines, and the guy had a uh, building with arcade machines in the back. Oh. Anyways, I said, I said, hey man, you know, you want to sell those? And I ended up buying seven space duels, seven complete space duels, for $50 a piece. And uh, I wish I would have known back then that the monitors were going to be worth a lot of money and the machines would be worth a lot of money and so on because, you know, I got the best of the best, put it together, and uh, I said, I called up my friends, hey, you want an arcade machine? 50 bucks. <laughs> or free. I gave them away. Like, hey, you know, I only need one. You know, and uh, I really wish I would have held on to those. I could have used them for trade bait. Uh, or I could have picked better people to give them to. I, 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 that that may that may not that may sound sound like a like a rotten thing to do, but sometimes I would rather have the right person have a game than than some idiot that's probably gonna multicate it or trash it when it breaks. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, you know. But, oh, definitely Space Duel. I, I would get so excited because I'd find a whole new shape. A new shape would come up, you know, because I think the level after this, the um, the cubes come up, and I'm like, oh, look, it's cubes now! And, and whatever. Oh, I love Space Duel. But, yeah, that's... You guys know Space Duel, right? I hope so. Now, you know what? Let, let, let me play... Let me just let myself die. And and wow, well, let's move over to Black Widow. Oh, by the way, can you see can you see the blooming on this monitor? Some of you monitor aficionados, however you pronounce it, may have noticed it. Now this this monitor has blooming, which means the picture expands, expands, expands. You know what I mean? And that's a bad diode in my high voltage cage. And it has been that way ever since um, I put this together. And I was too lazy to fix it. And this monitor has been running for like, I don't know. I don't know, man. This monitor in particular, not this machine, but this monitor has been probably running for about eight years with that problem. And I just never fixed it. You know what I mean? I had bigger fish to fry. And, you know, when the game, when the game totally dies, all right, maybe I'll give in and replace that diode, uh, you know. But okay, let me hurry up and kill myself. And because the next game I want to show you is right next door. Oh, no, stop playing and start killing. Can't I die? Okay, so let's move on over. Oh yeah, if you break the high score, you get you know, fireworks. That's also a really cool thing. But okay, let's move over to that was Space Duel, and let's do some Black Widow. Now Black Widow uh, runs on from the factory. They they modified well to to make Gravitar work. They modified a Space Duel board, and then they then designed a whole new board. Basically based on space tool hardware, but with more with more uh, RAM and more ROM, and they mixed up some of the addresses and th so on. But it, it's it's for the most part, let's say 70% space tool hardware, but they modified it. Okay. Um, but anyways, that was that was play Gravatar. Now Gravatar kind of flopped. You know, people didn't like it so much, and so Atari sold operators uh, Black Widow kits so they can upgrade their Gravatar and make it play Black Widow. Atari also produced some dedicated Black Widows that left the factory. This, this, this right here is a dedicated Black Widow. This left the factory and was always a Black Widow. Um, but for the most part, most Black Widows were actually conversions, even at the factory, conversions from Gravitars to Black Widows. Uh, okay, so let me open the coin door and coin up. Now, if you guys like Robotron, 
Black Widow is basically Robotron. Okay, we're gonna start at the beginning. See, I have a stick on the right that controls my fire in any direction I want. And a stick, aw, oh, you kidding? There it goes. A stick on the left that controls my direction. Down. I'm gonna reach down and mess with my pot. I have this pot on this Black Widow. All right, let's try that again. The potentiometer that controls the volume is failing me. That's better. No, it's not. It's dying. Eh. It's, it's minor things. It's always minor things. You gotta keep messing with with these games. And often, I'll get the I'll get the board working. I'll be like, yeah, slap it in there. And then sometimes it's just not. It just isn't done. It's always the little things that bother you the most too. But basically, hey, this is Robotron. Vector Robotron. You know, I figured out the trick with those guys is you think you're in a hurry. Matter of fact, that's the trick with this whole game. You think you're in a hurry, but you're not. You have plenty of time to do anything. I could sit here and avoid these guys forever. Look at this. Look, look at this time. There's no hurry. That's the mo that, that's probably the most important thing you could do to get good at this game is realize that you have lots and lots of time. <laughs> but as oh, like this, the, this level here. You can't shoot these guys because they explode. You can't be too close. But as long as... I didn't get them all. But as long as you're far enough away, you don't have to shoot them. I will get. I, I like forgot. I'm doing a video for a second. I don't know. I don't know if you guys guys would really care if I just played forever. The, you, know, you know, videos like that kind of seem boring to me. So I'm kind of like thinking you guys might be the same way. But like some of these games, I could just sit here and play. <laughs> All right. <coughs> I'm cutting it off. <coughs> Just don't want to die and walk away. Okay, it died. All right, good enough. Space Fury. Now, Space Fury um, is not only just a good playing game. Um, when I first started collecting arcade machines, I was obsessed with the vectors, and it seemed like, and, and I had no money, no money. You know what I mean? And it seemed to me that I could go to any arcade auction. And me being a poor guy, pick up any arcade machine for 50 bucks. That, you know, that's, that's the way it used to be. You know, and, um, and so <laughs> I seen a Space Fury. And, um, and this guy, he was at the auction, but he was selling it outright. It was not an auction. It was not a thing. And I said, ooh, I said, my buddy, my buddy Brian, Brian was with me. And I said, Brian, look at this thing. This looks awesome. He's like, yeah, I know, Space Fury. And I'm like, dude, I got to have this. I got to have this. Look at this. And uh, he says, oh, those are expensive. And so 
Um, I, you know, I thought, okay, 300 bucks, I don't know, 600 bucks, you know. And the guy told me he wanted $900, and this was like, I don't know, like 16 years ago. And so, um, and, you know, I have a lot of games, but, um, all the games I have are literally like 50 to 50 to 300 dollars or whatever. But this game I ended up spending spending some money on. This game I bought off of Todd Tucky. I paid 1500 for it as is. Um, no returns. He doesn't want to see this ever come back so on and you know what I mean. Uh, I'm actually one of Todd Tucky's oh, I bumped the camera stand. I'm actually one of Todd Tucky's uh, videos. Uh, where I bought this bought this space fury machine um, and you know this is that's a lot of money for me to spend and it was just one of those machines that I wanted for a long time and uh, and you know what and <laughs> all right let's start let's start again so a creature for my amusement prepare for battle <laughs> Once again, Sega Vector Hardware has a feel all on its own. It feels like a different hardware. It just, I don't know, I like it. The first time, I was like amazed. Check that out. You know, uh, Sega Hardware, um, I believe, is the only arcade hardware that was actually capable of drawing a circle. Of course, nothing really used it, I don't think, but th this hardware was actually pretty advanced. But uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's move on to the next game. Ah, uh, yes, Solar Quest. Um, I love Cinematronics vectors. Uh, it, they also have a feel of their own. They really do. And uh, since nearly all Cinematronics vectors have a, have a, a completely analog sound card, they have they have a feel of their own that way too. Um, this this was a game that I had for a long time. Uh, I had this game. This probably the long, this this vector is probably the, the longest time I've ever had a vector broken. This ve this vector right here. Um, Solar Quest uh, had a specific card that was an add-on to the standard uh, Cinematronics monitor that um, it, 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 it enabled it for 64 level intensities. So in other words, you had 63 different levels of how bright it is it, it would be, and the, and the 64th level would be no bright, no brightness, you know, completely blanked. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, yeah, let's play. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, that's a little better. Hmm. We'll try. We'll try that. Okay. There's a sun in the center of the screen. How much you want to bet that's just recycled code from like Space Wars? Now I can shoot the ship, and then I can get the survivor. Like this. See how I saw? I got the survivor and saved them. Or. I can shoot the survivor too. <laughs> but you want to save the survivors because the more survivors that you save, eventually you get uh, an extra life. Yeah, I, I 
just noticed that these controls are all sticky. And I'll guarantee that's my kids with like candy or something on the control panel. Oh, I hate that sticky. But eventually, you see, the first few levels of this game, all your enemies are pretty dumb. But eventually, they get really smart really quick. Let me see if I can zoom in a little better. Even though you might lose some screen, at least you'll be able to see better. Now the enemies are going to be smarter. I think it's 20 survivors you got to save. There's my extra life. interesting because to me to me this this was a wasted game uh, okay this game did not need a 64 level intensity monitor this this game would have done just fine with a standard by level uh simatronics monitor a two bit but hey all right let's go move on to the next game i'm sorry about this picture jeez it's the best i can do well, guys, that is 10 games, but let's play a few more just for fun. Let's see. Star Wars, or Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Um, I'm going to go for Armor Attack next. I actually think that... Uh, um, the Vectrix version of this game was, was better, but the, it, as far as arcades go, I do like this one, so let's play some Armor Attack. Let me coin this sucker out. You know, um, just recently, the world record holder for Armor Attack, John Sulter, he came to my house and he showed me some badass Armor Attack tricks that I could never reproduce. <laughs> yeah, like he knows he knows all the glitches in this game and and whatever and you know, pretty pretty amazing stuff. ahead and play the regular Star Wars. Oh, the camera is in front of my... Hold on. Okay. My boss 
ended up um, um, wanted, having me fix a cockpit for him. And, um, and as payment for me fixing his machine, he gave me an upright Star Wars. So that was pretty cool, right? But in the process, I actually gutted the upright Star Wars to fix his. But I eventually got all the parts and put them back together. like a 20 way tie at this point where I'm not really sure what's my favorite vector after all the others but uh, I know you guys are gonna want to are, are gonna want to see Tempest because everybody loves Tempest and you know it's okay I mean I wouldn't call it like the best game ever but several people do uh, but yeah so let's play some Tempest <laughs> Jeez. Now this game, right, this board right here, I haven't really adjusted yet because I gave my working board to Todd Tucky because he needed a board, and um, I hurried up and fixed one for me. So I need to adjust my BIP adjustment. It looks like I just seen it working and I'm like ah, finally, and I put it back in the push it back in the row. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're just done. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta be in the mood to play certain games. But, yeah, that, that, that might be just about it. Well, Gravatar kind of angers me because it is so difficult. I have so, it's such a hard game. Um, but, uh, it's, and, and, and Lunar Battle is even harder. It's the uh, prototype for Gravatar. Um, but I'm going to include it on here. Maybe we'll call this a bonus or something. <laughs> what is that in the way of the camera? Aha! Uh -huh. Move that out of the way. One of these days i got to get a real camera stand. This camera stand is probably like 30 years old. There. I'm going to try to move on to the next level, see if I got the skills, see if I can do it. And when I say move on to the next level, I mean get past this level right here. Oh. OK, 
Okay, now if I hurry up and get down here and blow up this reactor, I can just skip to the next ah, solar system. We're gonna try that again. That was, that was terrible. This game, oh, it's so hard. It really is. Let me go. Jeez. Okay, let's try to get some ass into it. Come on! I've done it before. All right, let me at least show you a, le a level, so you know what it looks like. Obviously, if you haven't seen, if you haven't uh, played Gunkar before, this is what you want to do. You want to get. Like that. Okay, so I'm gonna drive this guy. The camera says I have a dying battery, so if it cuts off, then this this part of the video is over. How about that? Ah, all right, that's enough for Gravatar. I suck at Gravatar. <laughs> well, guys, that's about it. Um, keep in mind, this 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 random list that I just made up is, is is a list of the games that I like to play the most. It's not necessarily... See, there's a collector in me, and then there's a player in me. Uh, I would have to say I'm 70% collector, 30% player. Okay? And those are the games I like to play. But... Um, <coughs> there's, there's games that I love more than that, not because of the gameplay, but because I like collecting the rare games or, or whatever. I enjoy, you know, like, I got that, and there's only 500 of those or whatever. I, I you know, I, that's part of it for me. I enjoy that. Um, for example, um, Astrak, uh, Boxing Bugs, those aren't on this list. Uh, I also have a Speed Freak coming um, I made a list to try to try to. Okay, my my space war is out there. I mean, that's something that I think now space war isn't necessarily isn't necessarily that rare, but I mean that's like it's one of those games for me. That's like man, I finally got a space wars. I can't believe it. I think I paid three hundred dollars for that space wars. By the way, uh, I have a demon uh, a demon project in the works. I have an eliminator project. I have all the guts for eliminator, all the guts for a zector, but I don't have a cabinet for for either one yet. So. That's, you know, something else we're going to get into. Um, but, yeah, so uh, help me out, guys. I need to know. I need some help. Help me think of some videos to do. I'm kind of, um, you know how there's like a writer's block? I have like a video block right now because it's been so long. I haven't done any videos. I was sick all that time. Um, help me out. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. And, uh, oh, at the end of this video, uh, underneath, underneath, I'm going to have a link. Now, a lot of you guys are probably going to be pissed about how I had poor video quality. And honestly, it's really, really, really hard to get a perfect picture on a real Vector Arcade machine. So, in the, in, in, in the description, I'm going to leave a link so you can look at 40 uh, Vector Arcade machines. And all the ones I showed you will be shown in MAME. And someone did a screen capture and they showed all the MAME stuff. All, you know, all those vectors being played in MAME. And it'll be clear as a bell that way. That's the only way you're going to get it clear as a bell. Um, but yeah, have a good one guys.